All right, guys, welcome to this new client interview today. I'm so excited. We have Noor. Noor started with us 10 months ago when he was 15 years old. Now he's 16. And when you started, I remember you were at, like you basically just started up your business. And what was the revenue number you were at? Just so uh, we have it right. 2K. 2K a month, right? Yeah. You were at 2K a month. So if I got it right, you run an agency where you help HVAC owners get more clients, advertise to get more clients, right? Yeah, exactly. And you'd basically almost just started your business and you've tried a lot of different things, but you know, you, you saw that maybe the, the problem was actually internal, not external. And the external tactics and strategies weren't sticking right because internally you weren't at the right place to receive them. And now how much are you making per month? 10 months at, later at 20 K a month. So you went from 2 K a month to 20 K a month at 15, 16 years old. Dude, yeah. that is insane. <laughs> That's insane. That's really insane. Um, yeah. So I'll just hand it over to you a little bit. You know, uh, if there's anything I forgot to fill up, I would like to ask you before, you know, you even encountered reality mastery. How did you even come across it? And why did you make the decision to come into it? Mm, that, that's, that's a really good question. Um, dude, I, I don't know. I just fell in love with your videos. I think uh, that's when it first started. Um, I always had a problem when I, when I first started up the agency uh, because I was so young. Um, my, my, I had a high-pitched tone. I don't know if I still have, I probably still have a high pitched tone. Um, but dude, I, my identity wasn't where I wanted it to be. It wasn't, and I didn't know it at the time, but my identity, I don't even know how I got to 2k a month. Um, and so I guess the way I got across and I found you was just on your YouTube videos, just got indoctrinated in them. I got to a point and I'm at the point now where I don't even look at your titles or your thumbnail. I just noticed that you put out a new video and I would watch it to the full, till the end. Go ahead. And I would always have literally like notepads taking notes on it. And then I would always hear you talking about this reality mastery program. And I was like, and dude, it was like, I, I was very new to the, to the space. Um, and so I just, I just wanted to explore what it looks like. I went on the website uh, bro, I just got, I just fell in love with it. I was like, holy shit, this is his free stuff. And he's literally laying it out like by week by week, like action plans. It's going to take me to the next level. And, um, just your copy, like what you're talking about, you, tr you see so many every day you get hit by three ads, people showing you the newest techniques or the newest tricks to attract clients. Mm. And they're all external. Um, and for anyone that's really deep into spirituality, I, I got really deep into it. Um, but basically, if your internals messed up, like it's your external doesn't matter, mm. no matter what you do. And that's, I think I, I might be going on a rant here and I'm saying too much, but I think what's going on is um, the reason you see a lot of, uh, this happens with every program. There's not one program out there that doesn't have this where literally everyone that goes in it does the same exact thing. They've taught the same exact thing. Their support They're they're being supported in the same exact manner. And then the people that come out of the program have two complete different results. Mm. One guy leaves a bad review saying it's a scam. The other one's a millionaire. And I think it's always going to fall down to the internal. I think that's really what wanted and piqued my interest because mm. I knew especially at the stage I was, which was my identity was a 15 year old kid in a small town. So I want to, I want to ask you about that. You said your identity wasn't in the right place. What do you mean by that? Like, where did you think it should have been versus where was it? Um, dude, it's like, it, I think basically just knowing that I'm a 15 year old kid, the bubble I lived in were three close friends and then as COVID hit, bro, it got narrowed to like two or one close friend. Yeah. Like now it's down to one close friend. Um, and so I was living in this really small bubble and I was identifying myself as just that 15 year old kid. So whenever I would have to do stuff in my business, 
a thought, I would also identify with thoughts and oh, oh my God. But basically a thought would come up and say, come on, you're a 15 year old kid. You have to play three hours a day of PS4. And then I would get on PS4 and then sit on the PS4 for five hours just because I'm supposed to do that because of my identity. Because that's what a 15 year old kid does. And I'm a 15 year old kid. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say that identity. So an interesting thing that happened when you joined the program was you, uh, towards the end of it, I think you just posted a picture of a smashed up PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, this has to go. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know, like, what was your journey like? Like, why was, you know, because I think you battled a lot with distractions like PlayStation and you, so you started to make the realization that these distractions aren't going to support my journey into entrepreneurship. So I want to know like a little bit about the journey, that realization, how that actually came about, how you battled with it. Because I think a lot of people go through these distractions, whether it be playing video games excessively, whether it be drinking, you know, whether it be any other habit that they fall into. What was that journey like for you and how did you overcome it? Bro, um, I, would, I would play video games all day long. And looking back at it after knowing the dopamine stuff, dude, I was addicted to it. Um, there wouldn't be one day I wouldn't play. I would feel weird if I didn't play video games. Um, I was, I think I was very attached to it, but basically what ended up happening was that, and I think uh, this is to everyone. A lot of people that join reality mastery are in the same position. Like people know what they need to do to get to where they want. Um, like I knew what I needed to do, how much time it was going to take to get where I wanted. Now are those things the best things possible probably not but at least i knew what i needed to do but what was happening was all these distractions all these video games uh all these hanging out with friends they were taking away from that if that makes sense so hmm. i feel like you know what you need to do but your identity is not matched to who you need but i think something you were saying in the program i think week one is um basically to get to where you want, right? You have to be the person that has that thing or something. I, I don't know how to explain, but I think you know what I'm trying to say is your identity has to match what you want. For sure. So how did you get to the point where you made the decision to say, you know, fuck this PlayStation. I'm just going to get rid of it. <laughs> there was a little, there was a little bit of, of a lot of reasons. Uh, of course, mainly it was, I, I was, it was distracting me from my work. So, People call me crazy still to this day for smashing it and not selling it for another 200 bucks. But bro, I, I remember, uh, I don't know if this is too much, like what I'm about to say, but like, I remember uh, something you share is to um, remove something from your current self. So you're able to have like that identity 2.0 and you literally destroy it. I know you said someone in the program cut like a hundred dollar bill. Um, you got short, you cut your hair from long, you made it shorter. So I feel like I needed something like that. And the, the most logical one was smashing the PS4. So I went from Noor with the PS4 to Noor 2.0 with that. New ah, okay. Uh, and that week, that week I signed three or four, four clients. The week that I smashed my PS4, I signed three or four clients. <laughs> now, if people took that really literally, they would just start buying PlayStations and start smashing it to get more clients. <laughs> but, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it's the intention behind that, right? So, okay, let's, let's backtrack to why you joined the program in the first place. As a 15-year-old, what was even your motivation to start up a business? Why did you want to become an entrepreneur? I don't know, bro. Looking back at it, my name is in the word entrepreneur. Um, but I think um, what I don't, I don't even know, man. I don't know. I think the Facebook pixel algorithm worked in my favor because I had no intention. I always, I think this is with every kid. Every kid wants uh, and wants to feel independent. Um, so since like the age of 11 or 12, I always wanted, like, I was a newspaper boy. I, uh, I was making 300 bucks a month, bro. That was a lot of money. 
and I was paying my phone bills with that. I was paying the occasional grocery stores with my Apple Pay, feeling like an absolute boss. And once I got a taste of that, I just wanted that on different levels. Um, so I'm genuinely trying to think. I, uh, I think a big factor, so I, uh, I started an agency before this one that I'm currently running. Got it. And that one, I basically, the way I got into entrepreneurship, to put it in a nutshell, is I wanted more of uh, that taste of being an individual able to support myself. Then once that was fulfilled, I wanted to be able to support my family. And I don't, I genuinely don't know uh, why I had that, like I, I have that at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, but I just always liked, it was, uh, it was always something that I wanted. Like just, I, it was very satisfying to me. It fulfilled me being able to know that I'm able to support myself and, and then some like mm -hmm. being able to support my family. So I think that's what got me into entrepreneurship. And also I never, um, I never liked the idea of having a job if that makes sense or going to school for four or five years to make like, I don't know, bro. I, I just didn't, I did I never liked that idea. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and what you see is what I see genuinely is a lot of people end up that become successful entrepreneurs and say they never wanted to work a job. They didn't like school or whatever. Most of the time they were D students and they, they never were good at school. I was like, I don't know how, I th and this was with you too, actually. You were, you were extremely good at school. Yeah. And you, you just still favorite, I guess, entrepreneurship. So um, yeah, basically how I got into entrepreneurship, I, I think I went on a rant there, was I just loved that taste of being an individual on my own and being able to support and actually make an impact with something. Got it. So how long were you in entrepreneurship with like, you know, building an agency and everything before joining Reality Mastery, before that June of last year? Well, here's what happened. I, um, I ended up joining the course that taught me the how to's two and a half months before I joined reality mastery. Okay. So what ended up happening and this is crazy because I'm looking so I I'm doing all the taxes and stuff. So I'm, I know what all these investments and what date they are. The day I signed my first client is the day I paid to get into reality mastery. I remember that because you were waiting for money to come into your Stripe account and you had to wait the seven days. Yeah. Right. Because for the first time you receive a payment, it's like you have to wait seven days for it. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. So I, uh, I, th I'm very grateful for the position I am. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't have any rent to pay. I don't have any kids to feed. So since I've started, I've been able to every dollar that comes into my account, has been invested into myself. Um, literally, I don't know if this is too much as well. I last year, um, I actually was negative 2000 in terms of the income and expenses. And the reason for that literally every dollar that came in was reinvested. That's interesting. Yeah. So a lot of people are actually averse to like investing money because they like hold on to it. You know, when you get into the nine to five mindset, I know I was in there, like when you work in a full-time job, like every money you get, you like start to hoard it. How do you think not having, how, you know, having that opposite mindset where you just like take a leap on yourself and you, you know, keep investing. How do you think that's affected your, or at least kept the flow of money coming in that's ultimately led you to 20K a month? Yeah. Well, I would say it's just, um, there is no, and, and I think you could agree with me on this too is like 20% of all those courses that I joined actually made an impact. It was you and like a couple other like technical how to type of this type of stuff. For sure. Uh, and I'm talking like income and expenses. They're not just like a couple, like 30,000. I'm talking hundreds, like in the hundred thousand ranges. And I still landed negative 2000. So what do you mean hundred thousand ranges? Like you invested a hundred thousand in yourself? Yeah. So to go into specifics, income was until December, mid December of 2020 from, 
from when I started, which was May, like m late May. So late May until the mid December, uh, income was 113,000 and expenses were 115,000. Mm. Yeah. So that's literally, I've reinvested 115,000 into myself with programs, courses, a little bit of ad spend in there. Um, but that's, that's literally what my situation is right now, where every dollar that's coming is literally be, being reinvested. That's very, very interesting. Yeah. So you're not afraid to, you know, spend money on yourself and invest in yourself. And an interesting point that you sort of noted is that not every investment yields a direct result, right? It doesn't yeah. yield a direct monetary result, but rather the lessons that you learn from that investment sometimes helps you go into that next investment and not turn you off to it. So for example, you know, maybe you go into a program and you realize that, wait a second, you know, I took one piece of this. Maybe you go into a program and you realize you need another one. You know, someone recommends something that helped them, you know, you connect with someone, right. And you go and you're like, okay, maybe I need this other one. So instead of being closed off to it, you actually just go ahead and invest in the other one too. So sometimes I've done this where I don't even hesitate to invest, right. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, it looks like I might also need this one alongside this, just like you realize you needed to do the mindset work alongside the agency work. Right. And that's what actually helped you. So your strategy isn't like invest in this and get a direct result from this, but actually optimize for anything that will allow you to get to that goal. Yeah. Does that make sense? There's, there's never anything I ever did, especially after the mindset training, reality mastery. Since I joined reality mastery and the way I was able to mold my mind, I, I've never lost yet. And I can't lose because of the coordination. Right. Uh, we, I literally can't lose. Um, and man, I've had, I'm sure any entrepreneur at any level has had so many like periods where it was like negative events. Um, but you're able to view those as literally without the, the best thing that ever happened to you. And that's exactly what happens, right? You just learn the lessons from it. That's what this journey oh. of entrepreneurship is. Exactly. And to add on to what you were saying, those programs that didn't directly make me money back, like you were saying, I, like I still learned lessons from them. I, it, it still was one of the best things that have happened to me. That's, that's really important. I mean, the first time I ever bought a program myself, it wasn't even like the program itself that made the biggest impact. The biggest impact for me was just making the decision to invest this much in myself, you know, yeah. because I've never done that before. I've never invested like you know, three, three, five grand in myself before. So yeah. that's when you do that, that like opens up a new possibility for you. And it just like affirms to yourself that, wait a second, this person is actually valuable enough to be invested in. So yeah, that's, that's a very powerful realization there. So I want to go back to that point where you're talking about coordination and um, kind of want to ask you, what, what was the biggest thing that you took away from the program that really helped you? Every, I think, um, everything's very, uh, everything comes down to perception and how you perceive things and, uh, the type of frame that you think through. Um, I, 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 I really like your analogy, the frame, the glasses, the, the, the glasses you look through. Mm -hmm. Um, but really what stood out to me and what I really took out of the program and what's really, really amazing too is like everything's always going to come down to principles and once you get down the principles then the techniques don't matter so what you see with a lot of programs like programs that i'm in right now like people and the actual creators of those programs every two years or three years if they don't do this which is they have to always revamp the modules and the content within them they have to make new ones so they're not outdated. And the people that don't do that, that have those programs and aren't making those outdated modules, new ones, they're the people that are in the programs and are paying for it, just leave with disappointment and no results. But with the mindset stuff that you're teaching, you're, you're always bringing it back down to principles. So you don't have to make new modules every day. 
because they're not they're not ever going to be outdated if that makes sense it's always yeah. principles yeah it's it's interesting you point that out too i'm actually in the process of like maybe adding and creating like a version two of the program so yeah. you know i want to make it even better than what it is even though it like people are getting great results so sometimes people ask me like why do you want to improve it it's already great but it can be even better you know but yeah it's like you're right about that because I've made it. I've always thought like longer term, right? Like about the deeper principles because the techniques always stem out of principles, right? It's like a pickup line versus being an attractive person. Like if you want to get the go, you just become attractive. A pickup line won't do anything for you. Kind of like in sales. If you understand how to conduct yourself and what to focus on, you don't have to like, you know, do some gimmicky line, like, you know, do some tactics, some sales NLP tactic to get the sale right? You just have to come from a place of service and focus on their problems and solving those, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of people don't really focus on that. And that's why they keep having to change things up over and over again. Once like a technique or a niche or a, or a, you know, way, a strategy of doing things become saturated in the market. Mm. Yeah, exactly. But, um, hmm. Dude, I really wanted to mention something and I want to make sure I say before we move on and I forget but something that really, really helped me as well is um, just directing my focus and energy to one thing. Um, and what I mean by that is a very, very simple example. It's the first call you and I had when I was interested in even jumping into reality mastery. And I think um, I, no one ever done this before, by the way, which is as we were going through, like as we were talking, and you were explaining a little bit of reality mastery. And I think you'll remember this. I was literally kicking my soccer ball across the wall and doing like a, like a soccer drill as we were talking about reality mastery, the thing that's gonna change the course of my career. Mm -hmm. I was playing soccer during we were talking. <laughs> like looking back at this, it's just like that's such an example, but gratefully you, you called me out on it, which no one has ever done. And, uh, and after that, I was able to completely direct my focus. Everything was so clear about the program. And I, I we ended up making a decision on the call. Mm. Um, but some like an example like that, where it was like, I was almost multitasking and it sounds so funny and silly giving you that example, but that's literally what's happening to everyone doing literally anything. Is there like multitasking it or half-assing it? Um, and uh, centering my attention, which is something you'll learn in reality mastery has also changed the game by a lot. That's so, very interesting. I never realized that, that that's what happened. Then that I called you out on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you probably don't remember. You yeah. Don't remember. But dude, I was literally kicking a soccer ball, and you're like, "Hey, no, uh, sorry, I'm just." It was like I'm doing an accent. <laughs> <laughs> are you with me? Uh, like, are you giving me your full attention? Something across those lines. And bro, I was like, "Yo, man, I apologize." And I I put the soccer ball to the side, and I sat down. And I really focused. Um, and it was like a big lesson ever since every call I get on my full focus um, has been on it. So that's something else that I learned. But bro, like at the end of the day, man, it's, it's helped me a ton in terms mm. of mindset, internal. Um, and yeah, dude, it's also saved me from shiny object syndrome. That's, that's another like 30 grand it saved me from. <laughs> what do you mean? Just uh, understanding that like shiny object syndromes and extra external techniques compared yeah. to like making sure your internal self and your identity are optimized. Like, I don't care about shiny objects anymore. Why did it save you from another 30 grand? I'm curious to know. Oh, bro. Do you know how many shiny object syndrome type of ads I get every day? Every, everyone gets. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's, uh, it, it's definitely helped a ton on that aspect. So going back to coordination, Let's talk about some of the challenges that you've had, some of the big challenges that you've had and how you coordinated through those. What would you say those would be? And you know, how did you overcome them? I would love to like hear some examples. I think it'll be really relatable to the people like entrepreneurs listening in. Yeah. So I've had so, so, so many types of coordinations and I was telling you this over messenger, I would have gone crazy by now without the coordination method. Um, it, it, it goes literally from periods of I was getting on zero calls 
to periods where I was getting on so many calls, not closing anyone, to five disputes hitting me at once. So uh, like, dude, like it, it got, it basically everything that has ever happened. Let, let, let me give you an example for it. Like with, um, with when I wasn't getting any results with the types of techniques I was doing on how I was generating calls for my agency. Like it, it got to periods where like the whole month uh, it was very slow and I didn't sign on anyone. I didn't book as many calls as I would have liked. Mm -hmm. it, it came down to what can I learn from this? How could I improve? Um, and every time I end the, I end the session of figuring out what I could learn from this to holy shit, it's literally the best thing that has ever happened to me. So I don't know how, uh, how much in detail you want me to go into like a specific example, what I learned from it and how I coordinate. Do you, do you want me to no, do I mean, that? Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, an example of maybe let's, cause I think one of the times we talked, you were like, yeah, you know, uh, a couple months ago I got hit with like a, like a 11 K dispute or something like that. How you overcame that. Cause now you're doing really well. And you know, you told me that you actually learned from that lesson instead of letting it defeat you. So I'm curious to know how that happened. You know, what tools from the program you used that you found were valuable in doing that? Yeah, that makes sense. So definitely the coordination. Um, for those disputes that ended up happening, number one, I, we're, I've dialed in my fulfillment now. So we haven't had a dispute in a while now, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but really the second part is um, I've, I've always taken after the program it was like everything is your responsibility i remember the module you were asking three questions one of them that really stood out to me was like you walk in and you see someone dying on the floor are you responsible for that person dying and then everyone's everyone's answer to that is no i'm not responsible for that and then it's like responsibility actually means like are you in control like are you able to do something about that somewhere across those lines um, but what I mean by that is I took full responsibility of this, th those disputes and like said to myself, how could next time around, I could avoid something like that. How could I not have that happen? Boom. Fine tuned my fulfillment. Now my clients are seeing insane results. Uh, number two, so that was a blessing in disguise for you. Exactly. It was a blessing in disguise because now what's happening is every client that signs on is a client success interview or a client success case study. Mm. They're getting results. They're staying on for way longer than I ever experienced people staying on with me. They're referring way more people to me. So it was a blessing in disguise. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And that wasn't even the main part of that. The, the second part was, um, for example, like a dispute, the most recent one that happened where it was like, a, there was the, like the last one that happened was a 6K one. Um, and it was almost a wake up call. I feel like I got very complacent at that point in time mm -hmm. because I was at like 15K a month. And I was like, again, like it, it, I, was, I just got complacent. Um, I really have no excuses about it. I, I just got to a point where I got lazy and I got complacent. And then the dispute hits. And now like every, like now I have 6K to pay up. Um, so that week I ended up signing three clients. Like I, I busted, I busted my ass. I got into the aggression type of energy um, and I made the 6K back and then some, um, which I panicked from. Like the one it happened, I was panicking. And then I sat down, how could I learn from this? Damn, where you've been complacent. Like if you haven't been doing what you're supposed to be doing, like the 6k shouldn't even affect it shouldn't affect you at all mm -hmm. um and anyways i ended up learning from that stopped being complacent got back on my stuff and uh it was it was basically two blessing in disguise this so. is so interesting because what i'm seeing in you Noor, is you've gone from a place of feeling like a victim right where you were 15 year old shouldn't be doing this 15 year old should be playing playstation to yeah. now taking full responsibility for all of these like big clients that you have, you know, a 15, 16 year old providing services to these, you know, big companies and, you know, helping them do better business 
and you know, scale up their companies. And all of these events that are happening that normal people would even get shaken by, but you've cultivated this like solid internal foundation where you no longer let it touch you. Of course, like everyone has times where they fall, but then you learn to catch yourself up so quick. This kind of mindset, it's very rare to find in people, especially, you know, people who are really young, but you know, I'm actually super excited at the prospect of what's, what's going to happen in the years to come. You know, when, when you have this unshakable foundation, because I think people just spend their whole lives trying to cultivate something like that. And even then it's difficult. It's easy to fall into the traps of, and the thoughts and the emotions that come up and get lost in them. But somehow you've found a way to keep yourself centered within them. So apart from coordination, you know, what would you say maybe you took away from the program that kind of helped you develop this? Um, develop like that mindset. I would, I would just say it's always going to come down to identity. Mm. So I still had that identity of a 15 year old kid. And although all these events that have happened, happened again, I would have just reverted back, um, and felt a lot of comfort in just saying, man, I shouldn't be dealing with this. If anything, let me just take a break for the next couple of years. And I'll come back even stronger when I'm 19 or 20. That's when I should be in business. That's, that's the society norm. Um, and dude, there's so much comfort in that. There's so much comfort in that. There is, you don't have to do this. No one expects you to do this. So it's yeah. insane how you're doing it. You know, like it's insane how you keep pushing yourself past all of these barriers and like all of these like traps of, oh, you know, I could just be comfortable here. Yeah. And so I, I would just say, dude, the identity, the way you're, you're able um, to take what I want and my goals and mold it into that and find who I need to become, find that identity and then mold that identity to my current character. The way the whole program lays it out, it, it's, it's like, dude, it's genius. And, and not, and you know, this too, this, whatever, like all, all the, like the principles that you teach in the program, it doesn't just apply to people that are business owners. Like, bro, literally, if whatever goal you have, let's say you want to be a musician or something like that, it doesn't have to really just be specifically like a business owner. Again, because it's coming down to principles and not actual techniques that become outdated, it's applicable. So I feel what also really helped with that is me being taken out of that 15-year-old kid, 16-year-old kid identity and being placed into an agency owner that's making 20K a month. Once I shifted into that, bro, it was game over. Wow. That's, that's insane. That's honestly, like that transformation to me is insane because it's really easy to get lost in the money and like what result, what result, what result, but not focusing on the thing that gets you these results. Like you said, the external doesn't matter if the internal is not in the right place. You've got to work on that first. So- yeah. You mentioned something interesting and in how the program lays this out well. And this is also interesting for me to learn to make it even better and like do more of what is working. So I wanted to ask you, and I think a lot of people have this objection, like in terms of at least mindset programs, they've seen so much mindset stuff. They've read so many books and I'm sure you have too. You know, you've probably been approached by other people who, you know, tried to sell you mindset stuff. So from going through reality mastery versus the free stuff I provide and the free stuff that's out there. What's, what's the difference? Um, I would say, uh, so if I think the way you're able to have us implement it and go through it is, is I, like, you can actually understand it. So with anything that I do, especially the program that I ended up joining before, before this one, but like the how, the how to, okay. I always been that person to watch like five of these interviews before getting on the phone. So I think uh, when I was listening to those interviews and people just like I am bringing these stuff up right now, like these sound so complicated, man. There's so many, like some, some were even big words. I don't know if I spit any big words today, but I remember in those interviews, bro, I think it's just because of how young I was and how I just didn't know stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, bro, I didn't understand a word that, that like anyone was saying. And so an objection that I had was like, holy shoot, like, holy, um, I don't know if I'm able to, yeah. <laughs> but basically I was just, um, I was like, am I even going to understand this? Am I going to be able to actually implement this? Mm 
Um, and do it again, the identity came in like, whole, like I'm a 15 year old kid. Am I actually going to even understand that? Um, and so you see even in some free and other free YouTube videos that you watch that are talking about stuff you talk. Um, I don't think they have put that time and energy into being able to say, okay, if I'm trying to teach this, what's the best way that they could understand it so they could actually implement it. So I think the way uh, the program's laid out is so easy to understand. It's chunked down uh, my favorite part, which wasn't my favorite part when it actually was, when I was in that situation is you lock, you literally lock the weeks. So yeah. I can't like, I can't finish week one and then jump right into week two. You're like, no, you learned what's in week one. And you get the next seven days to implement it and focus on it. And once that's dialed in and week two is unlocked, then you can move on to the next piece. Um, yeah. I think what, what's really good with, uh, with reality mastery is the way you're, um, you, you almost force upon actually chunking it down and actually implementing it and being able to see the results instead of it being some kind of like entertainment knowledge gaining thing. It's actually like implement that like you're able to implement it and actually 100%. dial it in. Yeah. It's so interesting. You mentioned that because like all of those things were deliberate. Like we have people who ask us to unlock it, but we just don't have the option to unlock it because like in the portal, how it's designed is you can either do, you know, that drip, that seven day drip for everyone, or you can just unlock it full for everyone. Yeah. Right. So the reason why we wanted to, I wanted to make it drip is because I know people would just like come in and slurp it, try to slurp it like it's entertainment and not actually implement it. Yeah. Right. So the whole thing about this program is, isn't about doing some technique. It isn't about doing, 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 it's actually about being, which no one shows you how to be. And part of being is making those realizations, right? Like you made the realization that wait a second, you can look at it and see I'm operating from this limiting place of this 15 year old. Um, these excuses arise because there's an operation from this, the, the lens is I am this 15 year old kid and I don't feel the need to do any of these things. That's why you procrastinated on your business and you didn't feel the drive to like work on it until you made the actual decision. I don't even think like, honestly speaking, I don't think it was the act of destroying the PlayStation, but what that symbolized, you know, what that decision symbolized for you. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, for sure. Because, um, I was justifying all those hours wasted on, I'm a 15 year old kid. I'm supposed to be playing PlayStation right now. Mm. Right? And you just rewrote that story. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's all symbolic. I think it's all symbolic. Just like, I don't think if anyone's watching this that has long hair, it needs to cut it short. <laughs> I think it's just symbolic. Um, yeah. So I, I think, I think I, uh, I just realized something. I don't know how important it is in the interview, but I just want to say how grateful I am for you doing the drip sequence and for whoever invented that drip sequence and that Kajabi or wherever the course is props to you. Like, I don't think I would have actually implemented it or actually understood it without the drip sequence. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. That's, mm. that's it's all a part of it, right? Like the community is a huge part of it. You getting in the community, communicating with other people, making some friends. Um, the program is a part of it coming on the Q and a calls, which you've come on a lot. I remember like, you know, you, you were coming on at one point, every single one of them and just asking oh. questions, getting feedback, correcting yourself, understanding the system until you fully grasp the system. Even the investment is a part of it, right? Because that's what I needed to help me commit because people who don't invest, like if you probably got this for free, you'd, be like, oh shit, I don't need to do this. It's not valuable. You wouldn't value it as much. That's something very interesting. I want to touch on. Um, I remember you mentioned it in the actual program itself. And then like what week four or something. Uh, you were talking about how you gave it, I believe to your mom, the course, and then uh, you didn't charge her for it. And at the time, I don't know if you ended up retouching it about the course of your mom, but at that time, it wasn't taken very serious. The program wasn't taken very seriously because there wasn't any investment in it. So I resonated with that. And then seven months later, it's like, I, I did the same thing with someone else. 
and bro, they did it. I didn't charge them. Mm -hmm. They're a close family friend. And bro, it, I don't know. It's the, the again, it, it's just, I needed that experience to really, like I resonated with it, but bro, after that experience, you really understand it. And it's, yeah. it's such a weird phenomenon. Cause the investment isn't really for you. Like, yeah, sure. It makes you money. But at the end of the day, the investment is more important for the person coming in. Yeah. Cause that's sim That's again, a symbol, you know, that, that transaction is a symbol. It needs to happen. I gave it for free to my wife. I gave it for free to my mom. None of them really did it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But dude, I, I, um, I, I really resonated with that. And so, um, I think any investment you make is beneficial, no matter, obviously it sucks if you put a bunch of money in, like I've done to certain programs and you get, but nothing. it doesn't suck because you learned the lesson from it and you're here today. What no, exactly. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Like initially it, I was pissed that whatever I invested didn't come back. Yeah. But indirectly I, I gained so much from it. So yeah. dude, that, 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 there's so many principles we just touched on that are absolute gems. This, this, yeah. this, you should go for like 49 bucks. Just do it as like a master class <laughs> for the amount of gems we dropped. <laughs> for sure. Um, damn. So I remember this was your goal. This 20 K a month was actually your goal. If I remember correctly, when you came in, but then when you were resetting it, you were like, I want to get to 80 K a month. So from here on out, you know, what is the, how do you, how do you, how does your family feel? You know, how do you, how does your dad feel? How does your mom feel? Bro, everything's the same, man. Trust me. Everything's the exact same. Really? Yeah. It's the you know, how do they feel that you've like, you know, their kid just got to 20 K a month. They're, they're obviously proud. Yeah. Um, I did make decisions in my formal school education that didn't make my mom very proud. Um, but everything else other than that, dude, it's, it's surreal. Cause, um, I genuinely don't have to like worry about like any financial issues, um, for myself or for my family right now. Um, I think what I think it hasn't really hit them yet because I don't really profit all of it. And what I mean by that is all that money that I'm making, I'm literally putting it back into programs and courses. Gotcha. So I think that's, but the, after, I think what really helped was uh, when I filed for taxes recently and got all of that taken care of and they literally all saw all the financial, like, I think that's when it hit them. Mm. Um, because for all they know, I'm just some kid that goes into his room and looks at his laptop. <laughs> so they don't know anything about how much money you made this month or they're not like concerned with it at all? No. <laughs> You're just a 16 year old kid doing things on the internet. Yeah, that's literally it. That's literally it. I'm just having conversations with old men. <laughs> They're in their 40s and 50s. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's absolutely genuinely like jokes aside, it's it made a huge impact, obviously. But what's interesting is when I hang out with my friends, and I think you've seen this. What well, you've seen it too at that point um, when you were like growing and stuff. I'm not sure if you still see like your friends that you're growing up with. Uh, but at that point, like you have this big business going on. And then at night when you go hang out with your friends or whatever, it's still, it's still you and your friends. Like with me, I'm still playing basketball with my 16 year old day one friends. Mm. Um, but I still like, it's just my, my aura is a little different. Um, but it's very, it's very interesting. Like you'd think when you get to that goal, it, it, it kind of hit 20 K a month. And I was like, wait, that's it. I was expecting a little more. Yeah. Uh, and it is just proves to me that necessarily hitting 20 K a month isn't like going to change the entire world. But, but I, the impact it's made has been tremendous. I don't, I don't think I'd, I know I wouldn't have gotten here without reality mastery. And the reason I say that is because my identity would still have been the same. You're a different person now. Like you've just yeah. evolved into a completely different person. Like the way I see you now, you're much more grounded and more mature. Like you're not, you're not like all over the place, you know, not ADD and like, Bro, I was so 
I especially when we were I still I've trickled some in this interview so far where I was a little on the rain where I was a little like jitty especially in the beginning I think but um especially on those calls we would uh, on the Q and A's when I would have questions bro bro I think that was like <laughs> that was I don't even I can't even think of a word about that right now uh, but I remember I was I wasn't able to like like you were saying ADHD all over the place yeah uh, but yeah I think it, it's just changing changing my identity what's really helped a lot is um I forgot what it's called but I do it every day man every day I still read the reality um the self mastery guide everything um and what I what I periodically change are the people when I'm doing x I'm I'm um I don't know like for example one of them when I'm working out slash boxing I'm jacked and no mercy Mike Tyson those types of things like resembling certain people and certain activities mm -hmm. that's helped me a ton man it's helped me uh especially with conversations I, I like my I'm able to have much a much better conversation with people mm -hmm. uh, and everything is so much better bro it's it's so it's so surreal how much changing your identity changes everything like how much of an impact switching your identity uh, makes so you just take on a different character and you start to like embody the energy of that character it becomes a it becomes a game yeah fun awesome man so what's next bro next is i'm gonna get on this interview having my I don't, so I don't know exactly if I still want to hit 80K a month. I don't know what that is going to bring for me. Uh, what I mean by that is at this point in time, like, uh, so I always had, I always wanted to have that goal of hitting 100K months. Mm -hmm. But for the business model I'm in, that would require a huge team, um, that would require a lot more of my time. So I think what's next for me is getting on uh, another interview like this one when I hit 50K a month. And then from there, I think I'll have a better answer if uh, I'm thinking still of going to 80K, 100K a month. Yeah, that's interesting you say that. And you openly admit that, you know, you don't really know what's next because a lot of people think that, oh yeah, you know, once you come into this program, you're just going to automatically know everything. You get clear on a lot of things but you also start to appreciate that things are always subject to change because you're uncovering more and more of your real self. Right. Yeah. So now, like after being in this journey for so long, I'm fairly certain on what it is that I want, but even then I'm still getting to that, right. I'm still uncovering and removing the layers of, you know, conditioning that society puts into you. Like, Oh, you need to want money or you need to want this and you need to want that. Like when I began, it was, I want to drive a Ferrari and live in a mansion in LA. Now I couldn't care less about that. Yeah. And I keep mentioning that in the program, but now once you get clearer and clearer, you start to see what really excites you, you know? Yeah. And like you said, it, does, it doesn't even like when you hit that 20K a month, it, it's not even the money that matters. It's the, it's who you've become in that process. It's the journey. I think you hit it right on the head. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I, th I think the journey of, going from like I don't even know if I should say 15 year old kid because dude like I'm still I'm still biologically a 15 16 year old kid um but I feel like uh just that transformation that transformation of what I went through is is worth is is priceless mm. and in transformation uh I, I'm sure the transformation that you had when you went from quasi that just graduated to where you're at now, transformation is probably tremendous. I don't recognize that person. Yeah. I just, I don't even recognize that. I can't, it feels like a whole lifetime, even though it was like two years ago. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Is it, is it cool if I, like, is it cool if, like, we go a little, like, I'm very curious as to how that transformation feels for you. Yeah, go for it. Um, I guess, like, I'm trying to think of one. What was, um, I, I don't know. Have you heard, I, I'm, I've heard those questions where it's like, oh, what would you say to that 
past that. Like, but I don't know how applicable. I, I think what I'm trying to get to is like, what do you feel was what helped you personally with that big transformation? What do you feel like made the biggest impact for how you went from quasi to the quasi you are now? Honestly, everything that I teach in the program. Yeah. Right. Or else I wouldn't have, if it wasn't from experience, it would just be so like inaccurate and yeah, the people would probably wouldn't get results from it because I wouldn't be able to communicate it well, but everything that I share in the program is everything that I went through and I can only share what I've been through myself, but it's just, again, the same system, getting clear on what you want, becoming that person and then abiding in that person, AKA coordination. Bro, you've, you've literally built, and this is after, this is after me being indoctrinated in like systems and SOPs for my agency. You've literally built a system and SOP for transforming your life and your being. I don't think anyone does that. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious why people haven't done that yet. Like for creating the life that you want, like internally your, your internal world. Yeah. Right. So that that's personally the most important part. Like people have all of these strategies and tactics for their businesses, but no one has a stra- like a, like a system for their internal oh, growth. <laughs> this is so genius. This is so genius, man. You're so, you're so right too. Mm. You're so, there's literally nothing like reality mastery on the market. That's like, what I wanted are, to build. Yeah. There are mindset courses, but there's nothing like an actual system to go through step by step that's actually like you can actually implement to change your internal life which is everything that was my biggest frustration too because i was reading so many books i was doing so many things i just wanted to become better you know there was a deep frustration and i tried all of these different things but nothing like everything was just like a different technique or a different hypnosis or a different NLP, different meditation. And all of those things were just at the surface, right? Like it's just things that you do. It never produced a transformational change in me. And then like, I started to like deeply become introspective about areas of my life that transformed and why it happened. And the commonality was I actually became a new person in the process of it. So that's when my epiphany came and I started to like use it for myself to test it. Let's see if I can do it in school, in my grades. Let's see if I can do it in, you know, the gym. Let's see if I can do it with my relationships. And it worked in every single aspect. So let's, the biggest struggle I had was with money, you know, because I always had a limiting belief around money. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll just be a scientist. Rich people are evil. And I saw that that limiting belief was just like a comfort zone for me. It's like, oh, you know, if you start to believe this, then you can just give yourself an excuse for not needing to make money and not needing to achieve that goal instead of just taking responsibility and ownership for it and just like trying your best and, you know, diminishing the ego. And once I did that, then like, you know, I conquered that too. So then I was like, well, this is it. You know, this is what I want to teach people. This is what isn't there. So out of that deep, it always begins with the resistance and the frustration of what isn't there in the market. And you're like, I want to like, this is, this is what I would have wanted when I was starting off. Yeah. Hmm. Man, I, I think limiting beliefs hold so many people back. It, it, helped me, it held me personally back a lot because the agency at the time when I started, I literally leveraged uh, a team that does like, like advertising. And um, basically what I did was I would sell people and then I would subcontract those people that were professionals. So with me, it's like, Hey, I'm not really bringing value to the market. I'm literally just sending these guys more people and making a check from it. Um, And so obviously as I've refined the fulfillment process, I I genuinely believe I bring value to the market now, Mm -hmm. but there was that limiting belief. um, And I think it holds, it held me back just like limiting beliefs held you back. I think it's, It's uh, limiting beliefs. I don't think when someone initially hears it, they genuinely understand what it means. Um, If that makes sense. Like when I very first heard it, I was like, oh, I don't have any limiting beliefs. Then I jump into this thing and I'm like, holy shit, I have like at least 15 I could count right now. Yeah. It's not like, it's not that you don't have limiting beliefs. It's just, there's no awareness around it because you're operating from the limiting beliefs, right? You're like looking as the limiting beliefs and you're like, where is this? 
It's like we're You're identifying with the limiting beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, that's crazy. That's crazy for sure. So I would say, uh, we're, well, did you ask me a question and we did we get off track or no, you were asking me questions now. (laughs) I just, I was just very interested in that transformation that you had because it's, it's, it's crazy. It's Mm. great. Awesome, Um, man. So just to conclude things off, what would you say to someone who's on the fence, you know, about joining maybe they're, you know, they're like, "Uh, I don't know if I should do this. What would you say to them? Like literally join it. And if all things go wrong, hit me up and I'll make, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back the investment that you made. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like use this is recorded. Like you it can't go wrong. It, it actually it genuinely can't go wrong. And you can't say that. No one can say that for any program out there. But the reason I'm able to say that is because this isn't like another technique. It's, it's not another, uh, external type of deal it's not teaching you what to do and then that thing gets outdated two three years later Mm. this is teaching you how to take your internal self and mold your internal self to feel joy all the time to just feel peaceful in yourself and at the same time have that identity where you're excelling at the certain aspects of your life that you want to be so like Fozzie was saying this is, you're able to apply this in your gym life. You're able to apply this in your business life, your uh, romantic relationship life, literally in your school life, literally anything. And it's a system and SOP for, for any uh, business owners watching this right now. You're, you're, you know, those SOPs or the systems you get for onboarding new clients or, or booking more calls or setting up ads very fast. This is a SOP and system to mold your internal life to the person you want to become systematically changing or, or bettering your life. And so I can't think of any worst case scenarios because whatever happens after joining, there's only good things that are going to happen. I genuinely mean that. My best hype man. (laughs) Quasi, do you, do you, are you going to pay, are you paying me? Like, did we agree on like a payment structure for anyone that joins after this deal? Oh yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll discuss that. Uh, guys, I don't, I'm not getting any commission or at least I don't think I'm getting any commission on this. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's not like I'm going to benefit from anything. Like this is my genuine review after being in it for 10 months. And what I'm very grateful for, and I, hopefully this doesn't become an idea for you, Quasi. But if you join it, you get it for a lifetime. Most programs I'm in, after the agreed timeline of working together, they then charge you a monthly fee to keep in the community and to stay in the actual program itself. So that alone is also worth every cent. Mm. So I would say if anyone's on the fence, watch. I'm sure I'm not the only guy that's very happy with the program there's probably like 50 other interviews like this check those out if you don't believe me you could uh search my name find me send me a dm i'll put uh noah's socials in the pin comments or in the description box below if anyone wants to you know contact you sweet yeah for sure i'd love that mm-hmm. and then if you, if you want to have a little more questions on wazi's program like it's the real deal so i Thank you, Fozzie. Thank for, you, uh, man. Thank this, you for everything, man. This makes me really happy. You know, this honestly, these interviews are more for me than any, any like marketing or pros- prospective clients. When I see these things, I'm like, wow, I can't believe like, that's what I did. Like, that's what's possible with this, you know, but Noah, thank you so much for joining us guys. Like I said, um, the Noah's socials will be in the link in the, in the description box. And, uh, Yeah, I'll see you all next time. Hope this interview was helpful. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this. If you like this, if you want to see more of this, I always love to hear your opinions and you know what you think we could improve on and make better.